year so far. Meanwhile, that cleanup effort along the Gulf Coast, that is getting some star power. It is called the Kevin Costner Solution, and this week, officials in Louisiana will give it a shot. Actor Kevin Costner has invested 15 years and about 24 million of his own dollars in the project. Joining me live now from San Diego, California, conservation biologist Reese Halter with Cal Lutheran University. Reese is also the author of The Incomparable Honeybee, and a good morning to you, Reese. Good morning, Alex. I want to hear about this Kevin Costner solution, what exactly it is and how it's supposed to work. Okay, well, what we have is it basically it's a big vacuum, and it's going to suck the oil out of the, the water and spin it real quickly around, and you get excellent separation, like 97% of uh, the oil away from the water. Okay, so and then what? Can the oil be reused? Or at this point, we don't even really care that much. You just want to get it out of the water. But, but is that, I mean, first of all, has this been tried, proven, tested anywhere? I mean, do we know this thing works? On land it works, but uh, in the big picture, uh, in, in the sea, we're not quite sure. That's what's the first thing we're going to see uh, early, either tomorrow or Tuesday. But, you know, the real problem here, Alex, is we actually don't even know how much oil is pluming from the seabed. The estimates now, and I've been in touch with six uh, eminent scientists across the nation, it's likely two and a half million gallons a day. Oh, so, wow. uh, that, I, it's phenomenal. These machines that uh, Kevin has can take uh, 200 gallons a, a minute and spin it. So uh, there's 20 available. We're going to need everything we can well, muster here. Yeah, well, 20, I mean, and that's great. If these things work, that is awesome. But we're talking about the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, it, it's a huge space now. Some of this oil has gotten into the jet stream, down, the, the warm water stream. I mean, how many of these might we really need? There's 20, but you'd think you need a lot more. Uh, thousands. Uh, oh. And, and as, as, as you mentioned, this dispersant is toxic, and they're pounding it in, 700,000 gallons of it. And uh, even, you know, Britain said stop it. And, uh, well, we're, we're just going into it. Wow. What about this top kill technique, the one that was supposed to be tried today, now it's been put back till Tuesday. What are officials and people like yourself thinking in terms of its efficacy? Is it going to work? It's, it's very delicate, Alex, because unless it's 100% sure, that is, unless when they're blowing these tons of mud at 152 atmospheres of pressure they're working against, unless it's 100% jammed in there and then cemented down, we run the risk of the wellhead blowing, and then, it's, uh, then it becomes even a bigger epic disaster here. Yeah. You heard part of the conversation there with the fishing boat captain, Dave Belay, and, and he's looking yeah. at a long time of problem for the fishermen to try to recoup their losses. But environmentally speaking, Reese, how long are we going to feel the effects of this mess? Oh, Alex, this is this is decades. This is this is an ecological disaster of epic proportion because once the oil and the dispersant land and they're they're landing already in the marsh. It, there, there's no way really to get it out. It suffocates everything. Uh, you, burning it, uh, blowing it back into the sea is is not a. It, it, that's not going to happen. And look, as everybody said, eight days from now is the beginning of the hurricane season. Wow, Reese Halter, pretty sobering discussion. Anyway, thank you for it. Oh, Appreciate awful. it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Thank you. Well, the mothers of three hikers detained in Iran returned.